so today I have a few things I want to talk about. Um, one of them is I'm so fucking stressed out. Stella, uh, I had noticed her kind of limping, but she limps a lot because, um, you know, she's disabled because that's, I, I think that, you know, dogs being science experiments, you know, we've fucked with them. And she's got, I mean, ever since she was a baby, she's had hip dysplasia and arthritis. And, and then out here, you know, I've talked about my, um, my yard, you know, it's like a, a forest and I've got pathways cleared, you know, um, you know what they're called? Paths. Trixie, will you please go lay down? Okay. Oh, that, that dog is so much more hyper than what I'm used to. Even with Winston. I mean, he's like that same kind of hyped up breed, but he was older. This is like, uh, whoo, she's just like, boing, 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 all the fucking time. I don't even know if she sleeps. It's fucking weird, man. Um, <laughs> she never stops. She's always go, 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 go. Oh, it's intense. So, um, anyways, um, you know, Stella has had these problems ever since she was a baby. And so she was limping around and, um, I thought, cause she goes out and she runs and then she'll run into a rock or, you know, she'll go back and forth and I don't know. I mean, there's roots and stuff out there. Um, you know, my yard's not like I dug up the whole yard and planted grass. Like some of these people, my yard's still natural. And, um, you know, and I've talked about, you have to be mindful when you're walking around, but, um, you know, she's not, and she keeps hurting herself. So anyways, um, last night when she came in, you know, and she's limping and then I noticed, oh my gosh, she's got a big lump on her front paw. There's like a big lump and this whole thing is swollen like cellulitis. And so it's feeling it, it feels kind of hot. Oh, she never stops, I swear to God. And, um, let me sit down for a sec. Um, woof, I don't even have a sec. Trixie, lay down and calm down, okay? Just sit down for a while, okay? There's nothing going on. You don't have to go out and bark every second. Lay down. That's one thing she's really gotten into, the barking thing. It was, it was pretty funny yesterday because the first time when, because, the, you know, the over there that I've had these issues with, and that's the other thing I want to talk about is, um, neighbor issues and overcoming certain things that people are doing or whatever. Anyways, you know, I've talked about the issues over here with the, uh, the gate situation and stuff, right? And, um, so now that, that it's all closed off again, the dogs totally do the run to the fence, you know, they all go running from each side they go right up and then just rah, 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 right at, the, uh, at each other's faces, you know? I don't know what it is in dogs' minds. Like, the, the fence is freaking important to dogs. They really feel it necessary to guard their position. And um, so the first time when she, when they did it, when she was here, she got so scared. She comes running up on the porch. I was standing there because I just opened the door and it's like, bam, and they're over there. And I just opened or just walked out. Then she got so scared and she ran over. But uh, yesterday, she or the day before, is probably when Stella got hurt because it was full on. <laughs> it was like tear up, and those ones were already there. Rah, 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 and these ones come running up, and she went like it was seriously like a deer. She like leaped like two giant leaps. Like I don't even know. I feel like I feel like we could do that. We just gotta get it in our heads. We can. Right now, all we see is our limitations. But anyway, so she just like flew across the yard and then she just like dove down and was down right where, where her face is down. Just rah, 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 rah. <laughs> I was like, what a change. It could totally be a kid's book about um, Trixie's day in the country. She's grown a lot, but she's still very uh, hyper puppyish. Okay, so anyways, Stella's leg is so stressing me out and, um, you know, I'm putting heat on it and stuff. And, um, it, it, I don't know, you totally, like, Lucy dying in my arms and having a seizure and stuff and just losing, I mean, she, when Winston did it, it was like, you know, I mean, it was, um, uh, you know, doctors and stuff here. So it was, you know, more, um, planned or whatever. 
and it, it, it felt right, you know, like, you know, he's suffering. He needs to be let loose from his body so he can get back to being like this chick. And, um, but when Lucy did it, it was very traumatic. And she was very young and she, ha you know, died right in my arms having a seizure. It was fucking horrible. And she was crying and stuff. So, anyways, I get really PTSD. Every single thing was Stella's. Like, oh my God, oh my God, what is it? What is it? So we're just some antibiotic and stuff. But anyways, it has me totally stressed. Like, ugh, it's horrible. And um, that's a, that is a hard thing to release. There's certain people, like, I have a, a certain attitude towards death that a lot of people don't understand at all. And they think, like, I'm totally wacky and I'm just disconnected from things. But, um, you know, I still have a hard time thinking about certain spirits leaving me too soon, you know, um, yeah, you know, it's hard no matter what your attitude is. Loss is hard. So, um, anyways, it is still kind of about the dogs too, because it's the uh, stuff with the neighbor, right? So, you know, that neighbor, for one thing, you know, um, she, you know, her, her attitude or whatever towards me, you know, all of a sudden, uh, you know, tell me I'm a liar and stuff like that. I don't even know if she even understands how rude that is. I mean, you know, maybe in England, that's not, uh, a big deal. Maybe they just call each other liars out of, you know, and it's no big deal. But as far as I'm concerned, it's a big deal. If you're going to call me a liar, then I don't need to have anything to do with you. I'm not a liar, and if all you see is a liar, then, you know, I, I, I'm good with moving on. I don't care. But um, some of the things I've seen is, like, the hand of God has come in and is doing these certain things that, to me, and it always seems to be, like, while I'm outside. It's like, you know, it's like God is trying to make her have, um, you know, a milk mustache in front of a crowd or something. Like some of the stuff is just like, oh my gosh, it is, it is a real thing about this. You know, you, you know, if you're not, if you're holding on to your ego, you're holding on to not healing, you're holding on to the persona that you have created under this false pretense, then, uh, you know, and you're fighting this, you know, you're trying to hold on to it. It's being exposed. <laughs> you can't hold on to it. It's impossible. Um, and, you know, I mean, I'm not laughing at her or anything. You know, it's painful. What people are about to go through is super, super painful. What I do get a chuckle out of is uh, the other side. They have a funny sense of humor. And like I said before, I don't see them as being like some people are like, oh, you know, they can be mean or something. I don't see it like that. And, you know, I, you know, we're, we're just in this energy, this, um, you know, hellacious, heavy, dense energy. Trixie, please go sit down. Oh my God. I'm so much more of Stella's personality. <laughs> Her and I can just, you know, sit here and kick back, watch a movie and, you know, be peaceful. Trixie can't do that. She's just like, go, go, go. What's going on? I got to do something. Something's happening. Oh, woof. It's a lot. Um, and then I forget what I'm talking about. Okay. So let's try to get back to what I was talking about. Um, so anyways, I'm not, I'm not laughing. I think that they have a funny sense of humor and you know, we, take things way too serious. We hold on to, you know, hold on to things that don't matter. And we try and um, stop change, you know. We think we know what's best. We want to control. So it's just funny, you know, and when you see them do it, because they have a sense of humor. And sometimes they'll say stuff, oh my God, yesterday, I said something in my head and it was right as I opened the door and I had the music going and stuff. So it was obvious. I, I, I think the music was pretty loud. It's obvious. I wasn't talking on the phone and I opened the door. I just started cracking it up. It was so funny. And I was like, Oh my God, that is hilarious. And, um, I can see why people start, uh, you know, people start getting the reputation of being mentally ill 
because when you're listening to them and stuff, they're constantly talking. And sometimes you have to talk back out loud and you just, you know, you're in real conversations. And that is, um, you know, just like when I was talking about, like when you feel an energy come towards you, even though in your, your eyeballs, I don't know. I mean, you can have your eyeballs shut or you can have them open because it will block out your outside vision. It will come inside your head and it will feel so close. It feels like it just goes like, woo, right up. And it's just like right there and you can feel it. You can sense what, you know, and, um, that's where so many people have got to learn how to, um, understand about energy and souls and stuff and how to, you know, I don't know, read the energy, pick up on what's going on, understand things that you can't see and stuff. So, okay, back to the, so, you know, I'm not making fun of her or anything. You know, I, I know she's going to go through some hard times and she is going through some hard times, no matter how much she doesn't want to see it, you know? Um, and every time I see, uh, their family outside and stuff. It just, I don't know. I, I pick up on things. Like I said before, like I was picking up on what she was, the messages she was sending me without words for quite a while. And then, you know, once she started using her words, it confirmed exactly what they were telling me <laughs> that she thought. So I was already clear. But so when I moved in and I, I, I don't know. I probably have talked about this before. I swear to God, the other day I looked and I was like, oh my God, I've got like 200 videos. Um, so maybe I talked about, but you know, having a brain injury. I don't fucking know what the hell I talk about. So when I first moved in and I had just moved out here, I, you know, I've been a city person my whole life. I, one time I moved to a town, um, I'm in my, I was like 20 or 21. I moved to a small town in Colorado, which is now a bigger town because it was Pagosa Springs, and so now it's like a resort village, I think, but um, when I lived there, it was tiny, like you couldn't go to the store and not see your neighbor, <laughs> and it drove me crazy, I was like, oh my god, this is so weird, I would tell my mom, this is so weird, and um, this is not my thing, I don't want to talk to people at the store, I don't want to run into people and sit in the store and have conversations, like, I was like, besides the fact, I feel like it's all the rejects that can't make it in the city move out to the country because they want to um, be away from the city. But now I see it way different. Because now I'm like, oh my God, those people knew. Get the fuck out of the city. Get away from the fucking corporation. Get away from the fucking government. Move as far as you can. Hide. Uh, we should all be living in caves or something. No wonder that's what the those terrorist people do in that one go live in caves because uh, they can't find you I guess so um anyway so when I moved in here you know I had not lived out rural before and I bought this house off um I hadn't even come to it I was in another city and I was doing it all online with the realtor and stuff and so I had no idea what the neighborhood or anything and from the pictures, I thought it was out further. I thought that there was no neighborhood. I thought it was a lot more like spread out. But apparently there's a few neighborhoods out here. And one thing I noticed in Washington State is like you're going down this road and it just looks like forest, forest, forest. And then it will have like a little turn and you turn. And when you turn, you go and it's still forest everywhere. But you turn into a neighborhood and there's forest everywhere and forest all around the houses and stuff. But it, it's weird. It's like they just dug out these places and made these neighborhoods in the forest, I guess. But anyways, it's weird. Because the whole time you're driving, you're like, man, there's no people out here. But there is. They're everywhere. So that's what my house is in one of those like little neighborhoods. I know I've talked about this before because it was weird stuff about the name of it and about uh, when I was manifesting and all this stuff. It was a lot of weird stuff that went with it. But so when I came and I moved in and I thought, oh, this would be, uh, it didn't have a fence, you know, and I thought it was more country. So I thought, oh, this would be cool. I'll just teach my dogs, you know, just stay by the house. You don't, don't leave the yard. So that's what my purpose, you know, I'm just going to try and do that. 
uh, and not realizing that there was yards all around me. And nobody wants to have a fence. They just want their yard. But I guess somehow they want us all to know where their lines begin and where ours end or something. They're very, they're very, um, what is that called? Um, when you are uh, protective of a certain area, they're very, um, oh, shoot. Oh, it drives me crazy. Anyways, um, so my daughter had come over, and she has an old lab. But it, uh, some dogs that are runners stay running. I swear to God, they'll run on the... Well, my mom's that was exactly like Brutus. He was a runner because labs love to run. And he was running the last day of his life because he ran right into a car and got killed. So... Um, yeah, they just like to run. Doesn't matter how old they are. Total gray face. They're out there still like, I'm going to do it. I'm going. <laughs> always got somewhere to go. And um, so Brutus had gone over to these people's house across the street and took a crap in their yard. And to me, my attitude is like, well, we're out in the forest, you know. I mean, isn't there a lot of animals out here? You know, like, are we really going to worry about poop? And, um. These people were. <laughs> they have no yard or anything, right? I mean, no uh, fence or anything. You know, no... Uh, I mean, they could go out and just, I guess, flag it the whole way around. Keep off my yard. Keep off my yard. And the guy's standing out there with his hose. She's standing out there with a shotgun. That's what they're like. So, um, <laughs> I go... Oh, I go out there um, to get Brutus. I can't even remember because this, this started with these people... And uh, they came out, and they, uh, the guy came out, and he said something to me. And I thought he was joking. It was rude as fuck. And I thought he was joking. So I kind of, like, laughed. Yeah. Um, oh, you want me to go get it, you know? And he just just tore into me, just going off on me, just being rude as fuck. It's like, dude, I've never even fucking met you. I just moved in, and you're fucking going at it. And I was just like, what the fuck? So I'm out in the middle of the road. <laughs> Neighbors everywhere. I don't give a fuck. I just went back. I was like, fuck you, dude. Don't you fucking come at me. You know, take your fucking attitude and get the fuck out. You know, I was, oh, I was pissed. It's like, how fucking dare you? And um, so his wife comes out and she wants to fight me. And she's out there. And she's out there, you know, she's ready to fight me and stuff. You know, what is she like up to here to me? And, uh, you know, I mean, she's as round as I am tall. And, uh, lady, I'm not a fighter, but I could kick your fucking ass. I'll tell you that right now. And so I just was like, you need to shut the fuck up. You need to get the fuck in your house, you crazy motherfucker. You know, that's how I was. I can't remember my exact words, but it was basically that. And then my daughter was traumatized. You know, she had to leave. She can't handle any kind of arguing between people. So she had to leave. And um, these people have just continued to hate me the whole fucking time. It's like two and a half years now. And they just are like, I, I don't think that they could hear I I any noise that comes out of my house. It's like megaphone noise. Any noise anywhere else in the neighborhood. I don't even know if they hear it. But man, I swear to God, I could fart over here and they'd probably scream at me. And, um, so she, she started calling, uh, the Humane Society and making them come out to, uh, try and get my dogs taken away and stuff. And that's why I put up a fence. I fenced my whole fucking yard. I mean, <laughs> like, I don't know what's wrong with all you people, <laughs> but I got a fence. But they'll go on next door and talk about, yeah, somebody came in my yard. And the other people will be like, yeah, did you get your gun? Just go out there and shoot them. They teach them how to get out of your fucking yard and shit. And it's just like, What? That's when I was like, man, this is the Wild West. This is definitely not a city. This is fucking insane. And that's why I talk about, it's like, so many of these people are just so fucking ignorant. I don't care if they've only been here 35 years and they're 70 years old. They, they, uh, they've got their own rules going out here. And they've got their own bullies and they've got their own bosses. And I don't know, these people over here could be some of these people on next door who are just bitches. And the guy next door to me, he's always wanting me to be chummy with him. I'm like, come over and have a bonfire. 
And I, you know, I stick to myself. But for one thing, I'm not going to go over there and be friends. You're best friends with those weirdos. You know, you are who you, whoever you're friends with, they, they shine out. Like, you know, if you've got friends that are assholes, believe me, you've got other people who think you're an asshole too. So I don't think he's an asshole, but I don't know why he would hang out with these people. Like, I don't know, you know, what's up with them. But so now Trixie's here. So, uh, and Trixie likes to bark. And so that bitch was out there yelling yesterday. And I was like, motherfucker, I swear to God. And right away in my head, it just starts, oh, all the stuff I want to say. It's like, okay, bitch, don't even fuck with me. I will, oh, I'm ready to fucking scream at you. And um, so I'm just like, I'm walking up to the house. And I'm just like, keep your cool, keep your cool. Just ignore, ignore. You know, and in my head, it's like, oh, yeah, tell her this, tell her that. Oh, that badass bitch. You know, and you're just like going and going and going. And you walk in the house and no fucking shit. I'm not even, I am not kidding at all. <laughs> On TV, the sign that said, and it even started speaking it. Uh, let go of uh, stuff that other people are doing to you. Let them be. Do not start trouble with other people. Let, you know, don't get caught up in the drama. Just let it go and it will feel so much better. And I was like, I, that's what I'm telling you. They're always talking to you. They're always telling you. So I was like, okay, guys, I get it. Okay, I will. Let it go. But it still stresses me out. I mean, uh, she wants to go out and bark. And these are the kind of people that to me, like, I, don't, I just don't trust them. Like... I, I, at first when she started giving me trouble and I had opened up, I, I, when I fenced the front yard and let, started letting the dogs, the, I had to do it in sections, you know, I didn't move in here with like, um, you know, just money and coming out my ass. So I had to do it in sections. And when I did the front and I let the dog start going out front, oh my God, she lost her shit. And this is the kind of woman, I'm not even kidding you. She, I, there was a person who drove down the road one day. I think they were looking for their dog. And so she goes out in the middle of the road and she starts yelling at this person. It's over here. It's over here. And they didn't hear her. Apparently I kept going. So she stands out in the middle of the street, calling them, um, a bitch, stupid fucking, it, I, I, just, just railing on them. You know, and that's, that's the kind of person she is. She's the most negative. Oh my God. I don't even get how there are people that are like this, but. You know, it's all being purged out. And, uh, you know, they have to face their own stuff. And the more you pull yourself out, the more they have to face it without you. So my whole point about all of this stuff is, you know, we're all going through shit. We're all going through stuff with people. And the more that you can pull away and pull into your self-center and don't get caught up in their drama. Because there's going to be a lot of people, a lot of people that want to pull people in. Like, you know, they're going through some shit and, you know... Because there's people who have that mentality. I'm, I'm going down, but I'm taking everybody else with me. You know, like. And, you know, I was thinking about that too. Like, you know, on, on a soul level, like there could be souls that really just don't have any kind of conscious awareness at all. Don't have any connection to others because of their own, um. I don't know, maybe they're baby souls. I don't fucking know. But it's just weird, you know, because there's such a variety of connection with different people. So, you know, I don't I don't really know. I mean, nobody has all the answers. But, you know, I, I still say, you know, look for the questions. You know, try and understand things. Don't just blow it off. And, um you know, she's, she's constantly making spectacle of herself. And I guess in the neighborhood, you know, she's known for that. So I, um, I, I just think it's, um, there is something like when you pull away, like if you, uh, this is what I found too in the beginning when, the, you know, when I was trying to tell people stuff and I'd be like, Oh, you listen, this, this, and this, you know, and people be like, Oh my God. You're so crazy. I don't even want to just go. I don't want to hear this shit. You, you know, the government's perfect. I don't even know what you mean about a corporation. You know, like they just don't fucking get it. But, you know, you're trying to tell them and they just want you to shut up and go away. 
And um, there was a point to that. Uh, maybe I'll circle back around to it. Um, but it, it, it just, it really is important to just, um, oh, so when the people were doing that, it was almost like they could prevent themselves from growing because I was their battleground, you know, they could argue with me and fight with me so they could keep themselves out of it. But if you pull yourself out of it and you're like, you know, don't. Don't let yourself be involved. Then they have to face things that you were, they held on to you so that they didn't have to face them. But then if you pull yourself out, I'm not saying, you know, blow all your friends off or something because they're going through a hard time. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying like, if you, um, you can, cause one thing is, is there, people are waking up at different, um, two different things at different times. And a lot of people start wanting to like tell their friends and, and try, try and understand what's going on and stuff. So if your friend is just like coming at you or whatever, you don't have to sit there and argue and convince them and stuff. Just pull away. Just pull back. Let them figure it out. Because you fighting just is a distraction for them. So you trying to convince them is a distraction to keep them from really doing their own work and having to see it for themselves. And everyone will have to see it for themselves. I mean, we, this is the period of time we're in. We're in this um, this cycle. We're in this new um, this new age that we're going into. You have to purge out the old, and the old has to do with some really dark, disgusting energy. And so people have to purge that out in order to move forward. So the more that we let people work it out for themselves, the more that they will, I think it, I think it kind of speeds it up, but I don't know, because I did that, and uh, all the people I know are still just completely zonked out, they don't even question things, they don't even look at, they can't even wrap their minds around it, that it could be something different than what they perceive, and, um, but I, I do think that the arguing and stuff perpetuates them not having to face it. So, but then I told you the other day, like when I was questioning, you know, uh, I don't understand how these people can all be still asleep. How can they not wake up? Like, what the fuck is going on? Why would a soul choose us? But then when it got the new perspective of like, well, because this is the last bit before the big show. So, yeah, they want to ride this wave out as long as possible. And, um, you know, that made sense to me. So, uh, I get I get why souls are waiting now. And I don't feel the pressure of, like, I got to wake them up. I got to get them to understand. And there still is that thing that hangs over us all. Like, you know, are we going to start watching people that we love die because of all of the poisons and stuff? And, um... Like, I don't even know what was Stella. Uh, that's the thing is, um, oh, because like yesterday, yesterday there was two things. One of them, I watched this movie and it was uh, Harry Connick Jr. and um, Renee Zellweger. And um, it was called, uh, Tui, oh, I can't remember what it was called. It was, um, but it was a corporate kind of, she was the corporate person who went to the small town and the small town was manufacturing an industry and they were, you know, the whole town, everybody works at it and the whole town, everybody is there for each other. They go to the church on Sundays and gather and all the stuff, just like what I was talking about with small town America, what they wanted to bust up. And they started it by doing the corporations going in and taking all the business away from these people. So they go in and they they buy them out, break them down, tear them apart, and leave people destitute. And that is what... Stop, please. Oh, hold on. Um, 
but that is what they were doing. And then they showed us in movies. They disclose it to us. They show us because when they do that, it's to them, it's like we've signed the contract. Like, okay, yeah, y'all go ahead, do your thing. And we're all like, we think you're just giving us entertainment. You're showing us this crazy thing. And that's what they were doing though. They, they did it all over. And this one, they, you know, they had the turnaround where the people were going to, it was going to become, um, the people who worked there were going to get to own it. But that's not how it went down, the takedown of America. That's not how it happened. They destroyed these places. And it was these people who were talking about the freedoms and the government and government stepping on their toes in the very beginning, from the very start. And then they... Uh, segregated them from us told us you know those are the ignorant uh racist people of the country you know don't listen to them they're horrible and so it, you know all of the stuff they've done has all been just to take us down and so yesterday there was um this thing um uh exercise thing and i wanted to see what this guy said and so when i started it he was a doctor and he started talking about, um, and this was an exercise thing. And he started talking about hormones and all this stuff. And, um, so he was explaining about menopause hormones and, um, what it does to our fat and how it, it was very interesting. But the thing that got me was that he said, and, and see, and I had that hysterectomy. That's when I got my brain injury. It was when I went in and get my hysterectomy. And so then they did try and, you know, get me to do hormones and stuff. Even at the beginning when uh, my kids were saying, you know, that I had dementia and stuff. And I was going to the doctor. I'm saying, you know, something's wrong. I can't remember things, you know. My kids keep saying I don't remember things. They think I have dementia. Oh, that's just the hormones. You just got to go on hormones. So, um, and as a nurse... I had a lot of patients, um, and I would ask them sometimes, like the old ladies, did you do a hormone treatments or not? And um, I would say it was kind of divided. But another thing that there's a whole, 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 whole bunch of old ladies that are str they're on um, oxycodone and stuff. And that's all done on purpose. And even when you see the stuff uh, that was done... Um, if you watch the documentary about the opioid crisis in America, it was started by the doctors giving it to old ladies and then kids, grandkids taking them and selling them and stuff and got everybody addicted. They knew that. I wouldn't like, oh, shock. We didn't see that coming. You planned on that coming. Be real. And so in this one, this guy was saying, do not take hormones. Don't take hormones. If you take the hormones, because he's talking about growth hormone and stuff. Oh, God, I've got to get this out. Ugh. Why'd you come in and lay down and rest your leg? Okay, so he, he was saying don't take the hormones. And he was talking about the growth hormone, but he started talking about all hormones. He said don't take them because what it does is it causes, oh my gosh, damn it. Can I please just finish what I'm talking about? Could you go lay on the couch, please? Okay, you don't, this is not the place to lay. Get up here and lay, and we're gonna uh, put the hot pad on your leg. Come on, get up here and lay down, please. Her leg is so swollen. It's fucked, god damn. Oh, drives me fucking crazy. More at the door. Oh. She comes in like, oh, it was a battle. So I go out there and bark at everybody for five minutes and I'm just tough shit. Um, okay, so he was saying that it will cause, you know, like, uh, because he was saying, please go away from the table. He was saying that. Um, when the hormones stop, when you are um, going into menopause and the hormones stop, that they will shift over and it will start coming from your adrenals. And so, right there, you've got to have good kidney function. Do they fuck, fucking tell people to focus on that? No. 
get you strung out on coffee and soda and all this shit, you know, uh, Tylenol and, uh, so many drugs affect your liver and stuff. And then that was another thing that was super important in what he was talking about. But so when the, you start taking some kind of hormone supplement, it will cause your body to stop making it. And then once it stops making it, it will cause the one, you know, because I've talked about it before. This is the stuff I learned in nursing school. You know, what a system that we have going, you know, like this, the breathing system is, you know, like it's very, this happens and then this causes this to happen. And then when this happens, it releases this. And then this happens like it's very intricate system. Everything inside of us is, um, it was one of my favorite classes, I think was learning about how the body works. And it's very complicated though. I mean, some of the stuff like is so what, what energizes us and empowers us. But so then the, um, this causes this hormone to stop making. So then you start going into this, you know, that these aren't making, but it starts destroying your organs and, um, motherfuckers, they want everybody to get on goddamn hormones and look at this, like how many people right now that they have that are transitioning. We got all these people transitioning, which I've said, how many times have I said that is all on purpose. They want you to hate yourself. They want you to be uncomfortable in your body. They want you to, they just want to keep you so confused all the time. How many fucking people are we going to have on hormones? And what is going to be the long-term effect? I mean, because the women who were going into menopause and stuff, who they stuck on hormones. Because we already saw what they were doing with the, the pill. You know, then you had these women dying who were on the pill because they smoked. Oh, well, you can't smoke cigarettes and take the pill. It's like, well, it would have been nice to know. So the um, the old women, you know, they already they have them all on oxycodone and everything else. They've got them. Like, when you go, I don't, I don't know. Some other nurses could have a different opinion. But when you go, you got a lot of old ladies with a lot of fucking problems when you go and, uh, to work. And a lot of them are, you know, a lot of them are drug addicts and they're on every fucking pill and they're, I don't know how many have healed any wounds. I mean, that wasn't even the thing for the people who are old now, you know, that was another generation. So those people have just kind of suffered in silence and they're just dying at way too young of an age. They're aging way too fast and it's all on purpose. They only want us in the, in the, in the good years and the most controlled people. They just, they just want the slaves. Once you start getting up there, they don't want you here. No, they'll just, you know, kill you off. Go catch your soul up in there and then tell you like, you did a really shitty job. Look, let's look over this. No, yeah. Let's, like, you did some shit. You better go back and fix it. And then people just circle back in and come back and go and go and go. It's like this fucking never ending ride and uh, people don't know how to get off of it they're so disconnected they don't even know they have a fucking soul so <laughs> you know i mean how many people are going to be you know, the only thing that's going to be saving uh, saving us is that the technology is going to be getting released at the same time with the disclosure and stuff and the technology i mean we've been living in this 1950s fucking space bubble reminds me of that movie with brendan Fraser, you know and Christopher Reeve and they're down there in the, uh, living down in that space bubble because they think that it's been, a, I don't know, war, whatever. It was back in the 50s when everybody's building those, um, uh, it was during the, I think it was the Cuban uh, Missile Crisis or something. And everybody started being like totally scared, like, oh my God, they're going to, oh my God, this girl does not sit down. Oh. God, um, so there was a lot of people who built bomb shelters and stuff. So in this movie, yeah, he's in the bomb shelter and goes down and, you know, they're stuck in the fifties and the whole world's gone on. And it reminds me also of another thing in Netflix. I think it was disclosure where they have, uh, all these earthlings and they took them up and they put them on the satellite and they've kept them trapped in the fifties or whatever. And, um, but really they're on earth 
and they're really just in this simulation. And they think that they're out in space and that it's a different time. That's how much they trick us. That's how much, and they keep us in these like time capsules so we don't have a fucking clue when they've got technology. Nobody had to die for a long time. That's where I think, I think that's going to be one of the biggest traumas that people are going to have to get over. Like people who have lost husbands, kids, people who've lost kids to cancer when they know that they had the fucking cure the whole time. Man, that's what I'm saying. This is going to be a very traumatic time that we're coming up to, you know, and there's a lot of us who are awake who want to just rush in like we're ready. And there's a lot of us who are in the spiritual thing that are like, you know, uh, ready. I told you, it's like we're fucking stallions at the rodeo bucking in the thing. Like, we're ready. Come on, let's do this. And, um, but it is going to be very traumatic. It's going to be super hard for a lot of people. A lot of people have a lot of different things that they're going to be working on. And it's going to be, and that's why we all have to really get in the mindset of being there for one another and being there together and loving each other. And that's why I'm saying if there's people who are just coming at you and they're negative and stuff like that. Yeah, don't go into it with them. Just leave them. And like I said before, like one of the things I found that is a friggin' blessing, just put in your headphones. If you gotta go outside and do shit and you don't want to be bothered with people, put in your headphones. Put on a hood. I even did that the other day. I mean, it was raining and then plus when I'm out cleaning up poop, you know, and there's spider webs everywhere. I was like, man, I'm gonna do this hood more often because I always get spiders in my hair. I get bites on my neck. And so I'm like, man, the hood thing. At least then the, they don't go directly into my hair. And I, especially right now, it's like, uh, there's several spider seasons, but in this part of the season is when they all start hatching out. So we've got tons and tons everywhere. And I told you when I was painting my house, it was so cute because it was, uh, I was up really high on the ladder. It was stressful and um, a horrible thing with heights. So I'm way up there, you know, and the spiders are all dropping down all around me, you know. And they would drop down and then they would just start swinging. And I swear to God, I could, it was like I could hear them. I could feel their energy that they were just like, woohoo, woohoo. Like these little spiders just swinging like, man, this is cool. It was, it was really cute. But they're everywhere. And um, so, you know, it, it, anyways, if you want to, um, you know, go outside and you feel like, you know, this person's going to try and fight with me. This person's going to say some shit. It's going to piss me off. I'm going to, you know, just do that. Just, uh, you know, if it's in the physical that you have to somehow block them out, then do it. If you can do it in your mind too, just, you know, block them, just ignore them. Just, you know, that doesn't mean that you're doing something wrong. It doesn't mean it's going to be that way forever. You've got to remember every single thing is temporary. Nothing is permanent. I even told my daughter the other day, I was like, a tattoo isn't even permanent. Not only could you get it removed, but if you sat there and you go like, I really don't want this tattoo. Or I really hate this tattoo. You know, the um, the universe will go in and they'll just, you know, get a whole limb taken off. So stay, stay vigilant in how you focus. Like I said before, Intent and manifestation is a weapon if it's not used right. If you're not, if if you don't have clear what you're trying to do, then you can be just creating chaos. And um, and whatever chaos you create, you are going to have an energetic tie to it. So that can build karma. And I've talked about that a bunch of times. That how you do that. But um, that is. Um, and I was just thinking about this, uh, I don't know, maybe last night or this morning or whatever, with um, Jesus. And I was thinking, you know, I mean, the guy comes and he's trying to just go out there and spread these messages, you know, going. I, there was a lot of messages he was out there spreading. And a lot of manipulation gone on with his messages and stuff. But just look at how, you know, all these beings, you know, that were needed a savior, they couldn't be bothered to um, focus on themselves. They just need someone else to fix them. That they um, put him up on a pedestal. You know, we're going to worship him and stuff like that. Look at how much karma, karmic ties now he has to how many people by putting himself out there. And I mean, luckily he was trying to bring a good message. But um, 
there's people that could misinterpret like like a message that he does they could misinterpret it and still have a clear intention that is not to um like not to hurt somebody but there's still like whatever they do that affects this other person this uh, the person who created that still is tied into that you see what i mean it's not like you just do things and it's just like oh you know i did that so i'm done with it no you're tied to it by a, like intent and manifestation is it, it can be used as a weapon and um it, people have to really realize what they're doing like you are creating all the time you know and you've got to be clear of what you're creating and why you're creating it that's that's super important and um you know just every single thing that i'm saying you know if it were to be misinterpreted and somebody did something or said something and you know i'm tied to what they do too and you know i mean i i don't think there's a karma court but there could be i mean there could be that you can go before a committee and ask to be released and stuff and that that's why some of us come down here to break karma and that's what redemption is all about no matter what you've done you can always redeem it but you got to be focused on doing good and helping and healing and stuff like that so and i was talking about that yesterday too but anyways that's um i don't know it's kind of a lot to think about i guess so probably i should stop and just leave it there for today it's already 46 minutes anyways and me just talking and talking in the days that only god started this is gonna be a long one i think and um you know i feel like big changes are coming in like i can feel i can feel it and it's weird like you don't even know um you don't even know how to explain it it's like there's so many things that you can know and see and feel but trying to explain them is a whole nother level <laughs> so anyways enjoy your day stay focused on your healing and um, be the best person you can be. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.